Okay. Hi, I'm here with Kareen Lazima, uh, EVP and Chief External Affairs Officer at Millet. Oh, we're talking about your digital inclusion strategy. Great to have you here today. Great to be here with you, Claire. Great. That's not... So I'm, I'm going to kick off with the first question. So across your, your markets in Latin America, uh, you've been running the Conectadas program aimed at supporting women um, entrepreneurs to build their digital skills. I was wondering um, why the focus on women. You know, you're talking about a project that is uh, part really of my daily life and of my heart. Look, we started because of the GSMA report. That's the crazy part. We started with the, because of the GSMA report, I think it was 2000, uh, 20, 2016, uh, showed really a huge digital gender gap. And as incredible as it can uh, look like, uh, there was a big difference between users and the men and women in our region. And what we decided is that something had to be done or that had to be done to solve this problem. And we worked with GSMA to really establish this project. So from 2016 to today, uh, it's a huge, huge challenge that we have been able to focus on. There is still a lot of work to do. And that was really where everything was to start. So in 2023, Millicom and GSMA signed an agreement to support Connectadas using our mobile digital skills training toolkit. So I just want to know how has this toolkit really helped you strengthen your offering? First of all, thank you. Because I remember we were in New York, what, six months ago, four yeah. months ago? And we signed that. I think it's, it's a great news. It's a great news because it's helping us to get every time more content, more capacity to put on our platforms. You know, we have developed a, a platform where all the content is, where we may can have access to that information in order to learn the basics. You know, sometimes we really don't realize that one of the challenges of people in using the cell, the, 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 the mythical the usage gap, is coming from the lack of basic knowledge. And I think this is exactly what we have to do, is the identifying that, developing those projects, and thanks to GSMA for that, implementing that in our platform, and being sure that we work as much as we can with our implementing partners in order to show to those women that almost live in rural areas, a very, very, very poor part of our countries, that by knowing the basic usage, you can almost multiply your business. And I can tell you, this is for me the most beautiful part, because when you go to meet them in Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and you really ask them what was helpful, they really tell you, you know, to know how to use Facebook to grow our business, to know how to do a business plan, to know how to do an auditing system. And all this has been basic in the very, very initial phases, but I think that's the most important part of the project. So thank you for that, Rene. Great, great. Thank you so much. So you've been implementing Connectadas to reach um, uh, and try and upskill women, and particularly underserved women. I was really wondering, what are the key challenges you two faced, and what are your learnings for how you got this? Well, the problem for our countries, you know, we are in nine countries, Central America and South America. Uh, the, the, the main challenge is identifying the right communities, Okay. And every country is different. Even people will talk about Central America, the community in Guatemala and in uh, Nicaragua, in Honduras, in El Salvador will be different. So we need to adapt and to work at the local level with implementing partners. We need to identify the right partner, work with the right partner, and being sure that we are addressing the right issue with the right cultural approach. And uh, this is, you know, working in Bolivia with some of the uh, indigenous communities is not the same as working in the indigenous community of Guatemala. But I think that's the first challenge. The second challenge is to be sure that we are able to quantify, that we are able to know how many people are getting the courses, but also that we are having courses that are adapted and that are constantly allowing these people to learn. The aim is not to have people going once on our platform. It's for people to really go on the mythical lifelong learning that everybody talks about, but lifelong learning on our model base, you know, on a system that allows people with very limited knowledge of technology on how to upscale. And we don't have to forget, especially in Central America, that a lot of the immigration leaves those women alone in their house because their husband go also to work in the U.S. or in Canada. So they need to develop, they need to work not only in getting the remissas, the remittances, but also developing their business to be every time more independent, have the capacity to offer more opportunity to their kids and to help them to have the right knowledge to develop their business in our countries. Because our main goal is also this, is to allow our countries to constantly develop. If our talents or the young generation have only one idea, is to leave or to go to the U.S. or somewhere else, this is going to be a failure for a lot of us. Because the most important part is being able to develop those local knowledge. We not only in the worst yet. It's also people being able to develop their own business to start an old opportunity 
And that will be a big game changer. That's why we are so excited, but at the same time, we need to identify the right implementing partners and work with them to reach as many people as we can. Um, so in particular, when you're trying to reach women and underserved women, what are some of the sort of adaptations you need to do to reach them? What are some of those implementation challenges and learnings that you've had? I think you need to look at two, three main challenges. You know, one language, everything needs to be in their language. Okay, so we need to do mostly Spanish, but also we try to adapt and also explain them for in a way that they are able to understand. We have to remember those are rural areas or underserved community or communities that have really a huge economical gap. So we need to be sure that what we are doing is not seen with our eyes of uh, uh, richer communities and et cetera, or richer countries, but we adapt really with what's going on in the country. This is important. For me, it's even more important because when I'm coming from Senegal and Tunisia, we see those kind of, of situations in our country since I am a, I'm a kid. So I think the most important part is adapting the content but also the delivery. We need to be sure that the implementing partners or ourselves goes there and win the trust. People need to understand that what they're doing is going to be useful because you know, they don't have so much time. You know, these people are busy. They work a lot in order to get a very small revenue. So what we need to help them understand, and we are working with them really on that, is that if they do those courses, it will support them. So the most important part becomes the testimonials. So being sure that uh, one person that did the courses and really enjoyed it and saw our business grow is able to tell to other people, to other women, to do it for that reason. And this is really the success. It's, uh, you know, um, in, in French, we call that the téléphone arabe, you know, the Arabic phone. There's one part to the other. People talking to each other are the best advertising for this project. And this is what we try to do, you know, testimonials, events, social media push, but very basic, you know, uh, on the web. Uh, web application days. Uh, this is the core for us. Great to hear everything you've done. What, we'd love to hear what kind of impact you're seeing on both the women um, and their businesses of the people who've been trained to your program. Okay, that's, that's a metrics part. I'm joking. But, you know, the impact is huge. You know, just to give you an idea, since we started the project, as I said before, on the basic of that uh, survey made by GSMA, but also the project that were elaborated by GSMA, we have been able to train 800,000 women. Okay, 800,000, it's, it's a huge number, especially when you consider the size of the population of our, of our markets. So I think that's for me is the most important part, the number of people, you know, and we are upscaling. Since we have been able to implement the web platform, I think we are reaching more and more women, you know, 100,000 every year. It's, a, it's a, huge, a huge number. But the most important thing is not even this. We'll tell you a story for the impact. I was in Guatemala. And uh, we were there for some business meetings and et cetera. And the team organized a meeting with 12 women uh, coming from the rural communities and brought them there in order to show us the impact the training had on their business. And it was incredible to see the, uh, the, the real effect because those women were really coming and we were not speaking. We were just listening to them and how much they were enthusiastic about uh, the, the capacity, for example, to use Facebook to double their sales. And at the point, of, I don't want to favor Facebook compared to other platforms, but in that case, it was specifically Facebook. But, you know, you have other women that will tell you how they've been able to develop a budget. And by budgeting, you know, how to budget their, their acquisition, they've been able to get a better return on the investment. And those are some of the basic skills, but simply how to develop a communication campaign. Some things that for us look so very simple and et cetera, for them, allow them to, for example, multiply by two the number of arepas that they were selling. You know, and you know, if you sell 100 arepa one day and the next day you are able, or the next month you are able to sell 200, it gives you an opportunity to grow your business, to be able to make a better return, uh, to buy a little more, to get a better price. So I think this is really the impact, giving the possibility oh. for those women to be empowered, to become business leaders, okay? And maybe, you know, the, the dream will be that lady would divide it by multiply by two the arepas. So maybe one day we'll have a shop selling the arepas and we'll be able to grow more. And I think it, it integrates in the whole ecosystem. It gives the idea to other women that they can also enter into business. If we're able to do this, we help the whole ecosystem to try. We help people to understand that communication, digital tools, mobile are a way to do business. It's good for our business, but it's specifically good for the local communities. And that, for me, is the most important part of our project. You know, having a real effect on people. 
Let me remind the number. 800,000 people since 2016. Something that we need to be proud of, but it also shows that there is a problem. There are more and more people that need those training. So we need to continue working with governments, with GSMA, with international foundations like USAID and others. We really need to continue working on that in order to be sure that the usage gap and the gender gap disappear. Because this is crazy. It should not happen. Okay, so for me, that's the most important part. Okay, it'd be great to hear um, how Conectadas fits into Milcom's overall digital and gender strategy. So the Conectadas, as I was saying before, has the huge goal of working on something that should never happen with the, uh, the gender gap. Okay, the, the, the idea that uh, men can use more technology than women and that kids, uh, boys can use more technology than, uh, than girls and have more opportunities with that. This is something that we have to really... Uh, to really destroy, you know, that we have to cancel. Because it also creates a huge uh, challenge when you get to the university level because you have many more men following a scientific career than women, and there is no reason for that. Most of the time, it's a question of perception. So we need to work on that perception. We need to be sure that uh, uh, the young girls understand that they can go to study uh, technology in order to have more opportunities. We, we, we know it. We see it in, in this fantastic Congress. Technology is about the future, you know, from artificial intelligence to soon everything that is going to come with digital and smart mobility and etc. The future is there. So if we want to be able to help our countries to thrive, to continue to grow and to get to the le next level, investment grading, more attraction of international investment, I think that the, the key challenge is convince those kids, uh, those women, that uh, having technology capacity is very, very important. And it doesn't start only at university. University is important. But we believe we need to convince specifically those communities that are underserved where the gender gap is really big because it will be a question of generation. You know, The, 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 the mother of today that is able to integrate um, um, digital into her sales, into her way she manages business, is going to give the idea to her daughter that it's a normal thing to do. And that daughter, that girl, will be able to go to school and study also the technological part, not thinking that this is something for the boys. If we're able just to succeed in that, I think it's a huge success for us, okay? Uh, the second part probably is being sure that the economy grows. The more we are able to allow uh, these women to grow, they are a big part of the economic uh, uh, texture of the country, even if sometimes it's a lot of... Uh, you know, I would not say illegal, but it's the, it's the black, it's the economy that is hidden, it's the economy that people don't really know because those women sell on the street, or etc. If we are able to help those women to get a uh, bigger business, to grow their business, it will also grow the world economy. And if we grow the world economy, we give more opportunity to people to stay instead of constantly uh, thinking that the only solution that they have is migration. Migration to the US, migration to Europe, and etc. That's a very, very ambitious goal. Maybe I will be retired before we are able to solve this. You know, change comes with a little piece of sand, with a little gra grain of sand, and we have to put it one per one per one. And if we do it all together as a community, that little grain of sand becomes a big quality of opportunities. So that's for me the most important part. And let me just finish it by saying one thing. We try to have an open platform, and this is why we, work, we love working with GSMA. Our platform is there to be used. So, you know, we are looking all the time for new partners, are trying, if people want to copy, paste, and to do that in other countries, there is no IP question, you know. The most important thing for us is to be sure that the model that we think works very well can be implemented everywhere and should be implemented everywhere uh, in order to help digital, uh, the gender gap to disappear. Because this is for me the most ridiculous part, okay? Especially coming from a family where uh, my mother was uh, very, very strong, uh, Tunisian women, and leading the whole uh, um, empowerment of women in Tunisia, I think for me it's even more important as a personal basis.